Pokemon Diamond and Pearl released for the Nintendo DS in 2006 in Japan and 2007 in the West and saw in the fourth generation of Pokemon. They released to positive reviews and have sold just under 18 million units over the years since. With Generation 1, 2 and 3 all having received enhanced remakes over the years, Generation 1 for the GBA, Generation 2 for the DS and Gen 3 for the 3DS, it was only logical that Generation 4 would follow suit and sure enough, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were announced for the Nintendo Switch back in February of this year. Here we are now 9 months later and they have just released on the Switch, does it shine like a diamond or is it not very effective? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Nintendo for the review code and now let's find out. In terms of the story, things take place in the region of Sinnoh. You are given a Pokédex to attempt to fill up by Professor Rowan, as well as a starter Pokémon with Turtwig, Piplup and Chimchar being the grass, water and fire types offered to you, and you must then travel across the overworld, visiting towns and defeating the 8 gym leaders found in these towns in order to then have a chance of defeating the Elite Four. You'll have your rival to best and a shady bunch of evildoers known as Team Galactic to deal with from time to time, as well as the small matter of a red Gyarados to try and find. So gameplay wise, the basic structure is very similar to the mainline Pokemon games that came before it and those that have followed it to be perfectly honest. They are of course RPGs played from a top down perspective where you must build a team of Pokemon to take into battle. Victory in these battles gains you XP and helps your team to level up, potentially evolving in some cases, learning new moves and generally becoming more powerful. You can choose from any of four moves at a time and whenever given the opportunity to learn a new move it will have to supersede one of the moves you currently have. This has always been a nice system of risk and reward. Do you take the more powerful move that you've been offered or do you stick with what's worked so far? Do you teach your Pokemon a move that's not of its type, therefore giving you some variety, or do you keep with something that it will be strong using? To build your team you will need to try and catch the wild Pokemon that adorn the forests, caves and other such areas between towns. Much like the originals, these battles have remained random, with you not being able to see the Pokemon and instead being pulled into battle from particular hotspots as you walk through them. I must say that I am very surprised that this was not one of the areas that they updated in this remake to use the more recent method of having the Pokemon visible on screen, allowing you to avoid battle should you want to. From a personal point of view, this was one quality of life update I was looking for as I felt this change was a strong one in the more recent entries. Talking of tweaks or changes from the original, there are a few here and here are some of them. XP is shared across your whole party from the beginning rather than needing to find a specific item to make this possible. Pause in the game will remind you of your next objective rather than having the previous method of a recap of recent events whenever you turn the game back on. I like this change actually, just from a convenience point of view of being reminded what it was you had to do if you've left the game for a few days whilst life got in the way. How effective or not as the case may be, a type of move is against another Pokemon type is now displayed on the move section of the battle screen, provided you already have the Pokemon you are battling in your Pokédex. A feature that was introduced to the series in the original games was the Pokemon Watch, or the Poketch for short. In the DS games this feature took up the entire bottom screen and had a list of apps with more being granted to you as you played and these ranged from a map and a clock to some incredibly useful ones which I won't spoil but they did genuinely improve the gameplay and I'm surprised this feature has never been seen since Diamond and Pearl. Well the remakes bring it back and it can now be called up with a press of the R button, once you have obtained it that is. It's not as intuitive as it was on the touchscreen, although you can use the Switch's touchscreen for it when playing in handheld, but it's nice to have it included again as best as they could, and I do like how they implemented hidden machines, the moves you acquire at certain points that allow you to navigate particular environmental obstacles into this Poketch. When you are near an area which needs such a move, the Poketch will call a wild Pokemon to perform the move for you, meaning that you do not need to load up a Pokemon in your party with all these moves as you had had to do in the original games. New for this game are the stickers that you will be awarded upon defeating enemies which you can then decorate Pokeballs with to receive different effects that give you an edge in the contest that you can participate in. There have also been some tweaks to the trade station where you can link to trade or battle and the underground system which allowed for base building although they effectively serve the same purpose as far as I'm aware. I must be honest I didn't put a huge amount of time into this particular aspect. In terms of the controls you can move the d-pad or the left stick to move and pushing harder on the left stick allows you to run once you have obtained the necessary item. 
Walking is quite cumbersome, but running can lead to you overshooting where you want to be at times, missing people you want to talk to, for example, and it's just about getting that balance right. All menu-based controls work as well as they need to, to make navigation nice and simple. Gameplay is everything you would expect from a Pokemon game, with the formula having remained largely unchanged since the originals of these games released. I do feel that the choices they've made in terms of what to improve, based on where the newer games in the series are now, seems a bit sporadic, but this may not bother others as much as me, and gameplay scores 17 out of 20. Controls work as well as they need to, the Poketch is less intuitive now, but that stands to reason, seeing as it was designed with the DS in mind, and they also score 17 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl's art direction will quite possibly be the most divisive point of these remakes. They have adopted a chibi art style which I assume was done to try and keep the spirit of the small character sprites of the originals but update things in the process. For my money, I must say it looks a lot better than the screenshots or videos before launch had made it seem and the vibrancy of the colour palette is definitely appealing but personally I feel the graphical style used in the Let's Go games for example was a great way to bring the series to a new generation and I would have liked to have seen them continue with this style. Or if they were intent on doing the chibi style, something like the plasticine look in Link's Awakening would have been great. I feel like the game looks as good as the style allows it to, but I don't feel the style necessarily suits the game if that makes sense. The Pokemon themselves, who are the stars of the show after all, look good in battle, with these sections using the style seen in more recent games, and battle animations are fun to see if a little limited. I do need to mention a strange occurrence in regard to the frame pacing. On starting the game up, the frame pacing was incredibly erratic, causing a stuttering effect which was actually quite nauseating. After about an hour of play, I removed the switch from the dock to check the Poketch controls in handheld, and upon putting it back into the dock, the issue seemed to have resolved itself, and the game then ran from this point onwards at a smooth 60 frames per second. I don't know why this was or if anyone else has experienced it, but if you are having this issue, it may be worth just taking it out of dock mode and seeing if it fixes it. Audio wise, and in my opinion, Diamond and Pearl had some of the best music found in the first few generations. From the Jubilife City theme with its gentle and calming saxophone motif at night, having different day and night themes by the way was great, to some of the battle music found against tough opponents late in game, it just seemed to hit the spot so often. Music has been remixed for these remakes and whilst subtle for the most part, you can definitely hear that tracks have a lot more body to them this time round. Bombastic tracks seem to carry more weight, whereas the softer tracks appear to have a little more nuance to them. From what I've heard so far, it's a great way to just refine what was already very good indeed. Visuals won't be for everyone, but at least the implementation of the chosen style is strong. They get 15 out of 20. Audio is great with some quite wonderful tracks, and the remixed touches bring the originals to life. It scores 18 out of 20. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl cost £49.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. This is of course the standard price that Nintendo have selected for games on the Switch, and I feel a bit torn about scoring this category. On the one hand, new life has been breathed into games that were very good when released, and a new audience of gamers can now experience these on their current console of choice. But on the other hand, I don't think the games look as impressive as a remake some 14 or 15 years after the original should look, and I feel as if the quality of life improvements included are a bit of a half job, and they should have gone all in here to bring it in line with more recent releases. I enjoyed revisiting Sinnoh, although feel that there are some missed opportunities here, but I can imagine a new generation of Pokemon fans having a lot of fun, and on balance, value gets 14 out of 20. To conclude, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl had strong foundations to build on, with the Generation 4 games being good entries in the series, and they take what was there and improve it in some ways. The fact that it is only in some ways, and some of the changes made to the series which have updated it a bit in recent years haven't been included here, means it feels like a bit of a step back for me though, I must say. Having said that, if you lamented the loss of random battles in the first place, this won't be an issue for you. Some changes may irk fans of the originals, but anyone looking for another adventure in the world of Pokemon will find a lot to like here, as you once again attempt to catch them all. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl get a switch up score of 81%.
Thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Are you picking these games up? If so, which one are you going to go for, Diamond or Pearl? And which of the three Pokemon do you usually start with? For me, it's always the grass type, whichever generation I'm playing. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.